Next up, we have Anirban uh, Saha, who's going to talk about external node classifiers and how we can um, be more efficient and do a lot more with them. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Anirban. Thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Anirban, and I work for BlackRock Financial Services Singapore. And we are going to talk about node classifiers today and how we can organize data with that. So let me ask you first, uh, how many are using node classifiers? And nodes.pp? And how many are using Puppet? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Let's see why. So what we are going to do uh, during the session. We are going to find out why should we organize data and why that should be done early on in your infrastructure. We are going to see how we can do that via external node classifiers. We are going to see a, a hands-on demo about that. Then we are going to move on to how you can do node classification through LDAP. And again, we are going to see a hands-on demo about how that can be achieved. Uh, I have all the scripts and the procedures in, uh, Git, in my GitHub repo, so you can just fetch this presentation, and you can find the files, and you can try that out yourself. And I'll obviously guide you how to, how to do it. So why would you bother to organize data? Uh, I am not exaggerating. <laughs> this can happen, believe me. Uh, I have experienced that myself. So on, at, on my job, when I started working on Puppet, uh, when we, so we didn't really monitor about who was editing uh, the nodes.pp. So it was almost our entire operations team who were allowed to write modules and uh, make modifications. But when we actually checked that what was being up loaded because uh, we started finding some errors. And when we checked what was happening, we found almost a few thousand lines in nodes.pp. And there were all sorts of definitions, starting from names, starting from regexes. And it was all around the place. And someone had it even defined a resource in nodes.pp. They had done a nice little package present, ensure present, and they had used it happily in nodes.pp itself. So, and by that time, we had almost scaled 1,300 nodes. And you can maybe imagine what kind of a pain that was to uh, streamline all of that into something uh, organized. So that's why you should look into organizing your data early on in your infrastructure, so it doesn't matter if you have 10 nodes. Because often I have asked people that, uh, why do you use automation? So they said, no. So I said, why not? So they say, like, OK, we have 20, 30, 40 nodes. Doesn't require automation. We just go in and do things manually. But I don't think that's the right approach. I mean, you never know when you are going to need to scale. And I think you should start early on thinking about that. So these are the few things that you should think about uh, when you want to explore uh, organizing your nodes through node classifiers. I mean, nodes.pp is always good. You can inherit. You can write all sorts of node definitions, regexes. But I think you should look forward into something more advanced. Uh, you have to adopt a standardized naming con conventions for your nodes. Uh, I know a lot of companies don't, uh, organizations don't uh, uh, find that necessary. It's just about the nodes serving the data. But a lot of organizations also do use uh, particular naming conventions, and which comes really handy when using ENCs. Uh, when using ENCs, you have to make sure that your modules don't uh, interrelate with each other very much. They should be isolated, and they should they should be written properly so that they can be handled in a node-classified environment. Uh, 
like I said, unnecessary troubleshooting in nodes.pp because believe me, when you have a problem and you see why your node's not working, it's going to be a nightmare searching, searching your stuff in nodes.pp. And uh, you should very well go ahead and if there are other departments in your organization editing your Puppet infrastructure, let's say application teams, DB teams, you should really, they should really be taught how to use ENCs and avoid defining thousands of lines of definitions. So let's see what an ENC is. It's basically a script. I mean, you can write it in Bash, you can write it in Python, Ruby, Perl, whatever you feel like. The only criteria is it should give you an YAML output. So what it does is it takes one single argument, which is your fully qualified domain name or uh, whichever your host uh, presents to the Puppet Master. So it takes the argument and manipulates the data as and how you have done your script. I'll show you how a very, very rough version of that after this. And what it should do is it should provide you an output as shown below. It has three basic keys, which is environment, which was introduced in Puppet 3. Uh, before Puppet 3, there was, uh, wasn't a really explicit environment uh, uh, specification. So which, um, as you might already have guessed, it uh, specifies your environment, production, staging, development, on whatever else you wish to refine. The second primary key is the classes. This is basically the modules that you have defined for your nodes. This is a list of all the modules that you want your nodes to sync with from your Puppet Master. And the last primary key is the parameters. The parameters, in turn, is a structure of key value pairs. So what it does is, it. so let's say here we have parameters location, which is data center three. So what it does is, location becomes a variable for your Puppet modules. So what so in each of these modules, let's say sudo ssh ntp, you can use the variable called dollar $location, and you can use it any way as you want. You can do uh, conditionals. You can use it as template variables. You can pass it to templates to populate your template flights, whatever. And you can define as many variables as you want. So yeah. Here is a more detailed understanding of uh, what the ENC keys are. Like I said, the environment, production, staging, de development, uh, classes are the list of modules, and all of them should be in the YAML format. As you might already know, with Ruby, Python, Perl, and all other dynamic languages, uh, it's no longer a pain for us to explicitly define YAML outputs. There are really good libraries present to do that for you. And like I said, parameters, here you see there are three, Puppet Server, Admin Server, Location, and you can put in as many others as you want. So what are the Puppet changes needed to implement ENC in your infrastructure? The only thing you need to do is in your main puppet.conf file, under the master section, you have to specify just these two parameters. You just have to mention the node underscore terminus would be exec, and the external underscore nose parameter should point to your primary script, which actually does all your manipulations. So this is my GitHub repository. And if you go to this link, of course, the presentation would be there in Puppet Labs. Uh, you can just fetch it. You can go to the repo, and you can just uh, fetch the scripts from here and uh, try, try this out. So I'm going to just show you how this works. So like I said, this is a very basic version of a ENC script. What I've done is the node underscore classifier script does all your manipulations. And the node underscore definitions has all my data defined. I'll just show you how 
that looks. So I'm just primarily using hashes and the hash data structure to define the environments, the locations, and the various modules. I mean, there's more really a lot of ways to do the same thing. It really depends on how you want to do it. But this is a very basic rough version of how this can be done. So let's see what happens when we run this. Let's say for me, what I've done is I have created a basic naming convention for this. So what I want to do is I want to say PCM P DBS01. So what this basically means is the first three letters, characters of my host name is my location. The P is my environment, that is production. DBS is my server type. And 01 is a numeric number to uh, specify which, which particular host it is. So let's see what happens when we run this. Yes, there you go. You see all the three uh, outputs, the classes. These are all the modules that I have configured my DB servers to have. The parameters, which is admin server, puppet server, and location. And the environment, which is production. So when, the, when your puppet client connects to your puppet server, uh, it will only take your, the host name of your puppet client as the only uh, argument. And then it's going to do all the manipulations that you have done in your script. And it's just going to give you this YAML output, which is all that's needed for Puppet Server, the Puppet Master to do uh, uh, the magic. Next, let's see the change in our Puppet configuration. So here, as you see, I had defined in the presentation which is node underscore terminus. We have defined this as exec, and the external underscore nose parameter, which defines the location of my script. So now let's see how this works. So what I'm going to do next is run a sync from one of my Puppet nodes, which is PCB, pweb01. PCB is Puppet Camp Berlin. P is production, web is my web server. So as you see, it works. Uh, I have just run this in no op mode, so nothing's really going to be changed. Uh, but it shows you uh, how, how it could work. And as you see, the variables that I had passed, which is the admin server, the puppet server, they are being used in these modules where it uh, changes the entries in the resolve.conf files. And you can do it and basically anything you want. Uh, your DB config files, your uh, web config files, your system config files, whatever you feel like. So that's basically how uh, the external node classifier works, which is in the script form. Uh, this example that I showed you was via a Ruby script. But like I said, you can do it with any other language that you feel like. The next thing that we are going to look at is the same thing with a lap, uh, using a lap. So anyone using a lap here? I mean, any organization? OK, that's good. Uh, I mean, if you see nowadays, there's a lot of people who don't use a lap, but for a lot Uh, but it's really a cool way of doing your node classification. Uh, what you can do is, so anyone who is, people who are not really familiar with LDAP here, I'm just going to go give you a very, very uh, short introduction of what that is. It's basically a directory service which uh, has your top level containers. Uh, you can create sub-containers among them, and there you can store all sorts of data, users, groups, hosts. Uh, the hosts containers are something which we are going to look while doing stuff with Puppet. So uh, LDAP, 
uh, can be used for a lot of other functions too. Uh, you can do your inventories like we do. We fetch a lot of data from LDAP um, using the same data that we do for Puppet. Uh, it helps us a lot in managing our infrastructure while configuration and, and a lot of other stuff. So you, you can just explore and of course, so I, what I'm gonna show you is a manual way of configuring, configuring LDAP for Puppet. But of course, you are gonna not gonna configure LDAP one by one for all your nodes. This process can obviously be scripted. Uh, you just have to look into look into it. So, what happens? What are the prereqs? So you have to have an LDAP working LDAP server. You have to have which can be on your Puppet node or of in production environments. Of course, there's always a, a separate LDAP server. The Ruby-LDAP package needs to be present on the Puppet worker nodes, which is essentially your Puppet master. Uh, without this, the LDAP communication between the Puppet server master and the LDAP server is not gonna happen. So do make sure this package is present. So this is how it works. So when, so there's something called a schema in LDAP, which gives you various, um, parameters, let's say here, the object class and the Puppet client parameters, which we use for LDAP Puppet configurations are not there by default in LDAP. So that's something which we have to add. For that, a uh, puppet.schema file is already shipped with, with Puppet. So you can just use this. So a total procedure for this, how you can do this is already there in the repository. I'll just show you that in a minute. So what it does is it adds these new attributes to the LDAP infrastructure. There's something called an environment, there's something called puppet class, and which is some, something called puppet fair. So environment is equivalent to the environment key in uh, ENCs that we just saw. Uh, the puppet class attribute is equivalent to the classes that we had just seen the classes and the modules, module definitions on the classes. Uh, and puppet var is something which is very similar to the parameters. It helps us to define the variables which we can then configure, which we can then use to configure our modules, use them in templates and do stuff. So the other thing which needs to be done is each new node that you add into your puppet infrastructure needs to be added with these attributes, that is the environment, puppet class, and puppet var, uh, into your LDAP configuration. I'm gonna show you how that's done. So this is how a basic LDAP uh, configuration looks like. So there will be a top level organization called puppet and com, DC puppet equals to puppet camp and DC equals to com. Uh, we have configured a uh, organizational unit, which is a sub-container under Puppet.com, which is hosts. And under hosts, we have configured production and staging. So these will be your environments which you want to use in your Puppet infrastructure. And this is what your node definitions will look like. Uh, you have to specify your distinguished name, which is your host name, pcdppms01.puppetcam.com. Then you have to specify your environment and the whole uh, hierarchy, the LDAP hierarchy. And this is how you mention uh, the object class called Puppet Client is something which is again added from the Puppet schema file, which ships with Puppet. So this specifies that this definition, this whole LDAP definition is a Puppet type is a puppet type definition because as I told you, there are different types of definitions, which are users, groups, hosts. So the object class puppet client tells LDAP that this is a puppet type definition. Next, we see the environment, which is production. Puppet class, so these are the puppet, all the entries that you see for puppet class are the modules, groups, sudo, users, hops, users, keys, and whatever else you want. These are gonna be the modules which are gonna be synced on your clients from your Puppet Master. And Puppet var 
these are going to be your variables. So this is your key, this is your value, and these are going to be used as your variables when you configure your modules. So this entire thing, uh, I'm really sorry about people who uh, are not familiar with LDAP, but it's super simple. I mean, just follow the steps that I have provided in the repository, and you should be up and running with LDAP in 15 to 20 minutes max. So this entire configuration needs to be populated in a LD file, and which then needs to be added to your uh, LDAP configuration. Yeah, and the last thing that you need to do for LDAP to work in your infrastructure is do this basic configuration. You have to remove the node underscore terminals and the value of exec, and you have to put it as LDAP, and you have to specify your LDAP server, which in my case is ldap.puppetcam.com. Here I am running the LDAP server and the Puppet master on the same node, so it's going to be the same host. I've just put in a hosts entry for this. And you have to specify the LDAP base. So this is the container which has your environments. So you, you will be configuring production staging development under this particular container. And of course, the master needs to be restarted for the changes to take effect. Again, you will find all these files under the LDAP directory in this particular repository. And now I'm going to show you how this is done. So if you go into this repository, you will find a directory called LDAP. And there's a file called puppet underscore LDAP steps. So this file has a very, a very basic and uh, workable uh, steps to get started with the LDAP server. So what we are going to do is we already have my LDAP server set up, so we are going to see how that looks like. Damn. That's okay, this works. So if you see this command, LDAP search, what it does is it gives us all entries under our top level container in LDAP. So we have configured a top level container called puppetcamp.com. So if you see, I already have these definitions. It, there's a top level container. Then we have hosts under that. Then we have production and staging, which are our environments. And then we have our host definitions. So this is what a Puppet definition would look like. This is the particular definition that you're going to put in your LDAP files, and then you are going to upload this to LDAP. So this is a definition from my Puppet master with the same parameters that I had described to you, and this is the definition for a different host. So what we're going to do now is we are going to add a definition for a new host that we are going to add to LDAP. So this is the example of a LD file in LDAP, which shows your unique name, the distinguished name, which is your host name, pcbpwebzero1.puppetcam.com, under your production environment with your object class, as Puppet Client to make sure that LDAP knows that this is a Puppet definition. Uh, your Puppet class definitions, your Puppet variables. Now what we are going to do is we are going to add this to LDAP. So we can just follow this steps. So what we are doing here is we are using the LDAP add command, which is basically the same command you use to do any kind of node 
uh, additions to LDAP. Let's let it be users or groups or nodes or whatever. Uh, it would ask me for a password. OK, so it says adding new entry PCBP Web 01. So let's see how that looks in a config. Yep, so here you see a new configuration PCBP Web 01 is added. So the next thing what we need to do is, so you don't need to do any kind of LDAP reloads or something for this to work. The only thing we need to do is we need to change our puppet configuration file. So we are just going to comment these two lines, which we had used for the node classifiers. And we are going to uncomment the node terminus which specifies LDAP, our LDAP server name, and the LDAP base where it's going to look for the configurations. And the only thing we are going to do after this is reload the web server because I'm running Puppet server over Passenger. OK, it's done. So let's see what happens. And there you see it works just as before. So basically, that's how you do node classification in uh, Puppet. I mean, it might seem for some that why am I going to take so much of pain to configure an LDAP server or write scripts, massive scripts in different languages for my uh, infrastructure. But like I told you, you never know when you're going to scale. So it's really important that you take that decision early on in your infrastructure and try to automate as and, and try to put in as much efficiency as you can into it so that you don't have to clean up and you don't have to do unnecessary troubleshooting when you scale further into your infrastructure. So yeah, that was pretty it. I mean, we are finished much ahead of time. If anyone has any questions, yes. Um, it's quite interesting topic, but mm -hmm. um, you said at the last uh, few sentences that uh, you should be um, able to scale. Um, the, the environment, uh -huh. but I didn't, uh, don't see any uh, advantage uh, using using LDAP to scale uh, compared to Hira or uh, Foreman or other. Yeah, uh, so like when tools. I asked about how many people were using LDAP, I think we just found five five hands, right? So I think here there are a lot of people here, and out of them, only five are using LDAP. So we are using LDAP in our infrastructure, but we are still not using it for Puppet node classification. But that's something which we might look into the future. Because, like I said, most of the organizations that you find won't be using LDAP because a lot of people find it complex. They find it hard to set up. I mean, I have included the steps here. You can easily follow it, and you can get your LDAP server working. But if you go into LDAP terminologies, you will find it it's a bit complex to get hold of the entire concept. So a lot of organizations don't go into those kind of complexities. So like I said, we are using LDAP, but we are not using it for node classification. But this is a feature which is there in Puppet, and it can be utilized. I mean, just go ahead and try it. You can just spin up a VM and try this out. And you can, you can explore what, what all options you have um, when using LDAP with Puppet, or otherwise, if you can just go ahead and use classifiers. I mean, this was just a rough version of what you can do. But of course, you can script. You can put in all your custom requirements. And I guess it, you, you will find some uh, value addition for this into your infrastructure. Yes. How do you put um, parameters to uh, ENC via LDAP? I see only that you use a class name. 
uh -huh. but I do not see any parameters. So, if you see here, the puppet var attribute. So, if you want to put your modules, you use the puppet class attribute. And if you want to put in variables, which you want to add into your modules, use in your modules, you use the puppet var attribute. So, when you say puppet var, you have to show your key and your value, which is location puppet cam Dusseldorf here. Puppet server is this particular IP. So whatever you want, your app name, whatever other vari variables you want, you can just put it in here, and it's going to populate this into a lab. Was it clear? Or, uh, uh, for example, if you uh, create a user, huh? No, no. So it's so the only attributes that you have in the LDAP uh, configuration is object class. So object class is something which is already there in LDAP. Object class is something which you use to define your the type of definitions that you are doing. Let's say here it says puppet client. There are other values for hosts, for users, for groups and for other all, all sorts of LDAP definitions. So object class is something which is already there. The puppet schema that comes that ships with puppet actually tells LDAP that I am adding a new definition type, which is puppet client. So when you say object class is puppet client, LDAP knows that this is not a user, this is not a group, this is not a host, this is a puppet definition. And then the extra parameters, the attributes that are added from the puppet schema are environment, puppet class, and puppet var. So environment is obviously the environment that you're configuring. Puppet class is something which defines your modules, the modules that you're going to add to your nodes. And puppet var are the parameters or the variables that you're going to use in your modules. So let's say here puppet var shows location is puppet camp to sold off. So when you apply this to your node, you will have a variable called dollar location in your modules, which you can then put it anywhere you like. You can do um, conditionals, you can do templating, whatever you feel like. So the puppet var is something which is uh, not, th that cannot be changed. The puppet var actually defines, it tells LDAP that this is a variable. And the next thing which I'm going to define beside it is my key value pair which here is location, this, puppet server, the IPs, admin server, the IPs. Was that OK? Yeah. Cool. Anyone else? Yes. I, my idea is uh, <clears throat> to use uh, CMDB, so a config management database. Mm -hmm. um, did I understood it right? Um, I put my configuration users variables in a database, then I create a script that uh, pulls out these values and creates YAML data, uh, YAML files for Hira, and uh, I in the RMB file. ENC, I say this script uh, mm -hmm. does my work. So th this is uh, how it should be done. So what the script does, it's, it, so in a very basic definition, node classification is something which is just a substitute for your nodes.pp. So where you are configuring your modules, your users, your groups, it all remains the same. Let's say you want to use some kind of a DB, that's really up to you. So node classification is something which does not go into that space at all. What it does is it's just a substitute for nodes.pp. What it tells your nodes is, what it tells Puppet Master is, what's the environment for this node, what modules is my node supposed to get, and what variables can be used in my nodes. So let's say uh, before Puppet 3, there was nothing called environment. So what we used to do is we used to define our nodes in nodes.pp. We used to define, we used to include our modules, and we used to define classes. We could include classes, and it would just tell it that uh, 
these modules are going to be applied to my nodes. In the modules, what we used to do is we used to define variables. We used to say dollar something is equals to something. Then we could apply that particular variable to all other module resource definitions. Here, what the new features that have been added after Puppet 3 is the environment parameter, which actually you you don't have to do anything extra to tell Puppet Master that which environment my node belongs to. And the variables is just a one-time definition. It can be used in all the modules that you define in your node classification. So it's basically just telling Puppet Master what my node needs to do and what modules are available to my nodes and what variables I'm defining for my nodes. So nothing else. So regarding your data, the actual configuration data, where you're getting it from, that does not, the node classifier is not concerned with that data at all. OK, thank you. Anyone else? OK, thank you. Thank you, guys.